as I continue to prepare my pieces for the encaustic show coming up in June at Gather here in Bloomington, Indiana, I thought that I would bring you along for just a little bit of the journey. I've had a lot of people ask me um, about encaustic and specifically I am working right now with wax and photography, which is sometimes referred to as encaustic photography. Um, I thought that I would just show you a little bit of the process. This video is not going to be professionally done. I don't have my stands out and the lighting and all of that stuff, but I thought it would just be fun since I'm down here working to show you a little bit of what goes into the process. Okay, so as you can tell, this video is going to be very shaky. This is more of a do what I say, not what I do type thing. <laughs> um, my studio area is kind of a mess right now, but you get the picture. This is real life. So just to begin, I have a cradled wood panel that I have painted with encaustic gesso, and that's just to whiten it, lighten it, and whiten it up just a little bit. I have just heated up the panel a little bit with um, the heat gun, so it's a little bit warm to the touch. And I have my encaustic medium over here on my very, very messy panel because I've been doing some other play and I have it all heated up and ready to go. So I'm just going to apply my first layer down here. It's really tricky to do when I'm sitting here holding the camera. This is just putting on this first layer and I'm not being too, too careful with it. I'm probably going to overfuse it down just to get it smooth this first time. And I have also not taped the edges of the board. So you may see in some places the wax has dripped down and that's intentional on this particular piece. I'm just going to let it be a little bit more rustic. Sometimes I'll tape it off so that um, the wax doesn't get on the sides, but I have my first layer of encaustic medium down now, and it'll get a little bit loud. I'm going to use my heat gun for this fusing um, instead of the iron. It's right over there. Messy table. All right, now I am just getting ready to rotate the piece. Um, so that I can put another layer down crisscross. It helps eliminate some of the lines. And then I'll probably put a third layer down of the encaustic medium um, each time. I will be fusing using the heat gun and then I will come back and restart the video to show you what I'm going to do next. So two more layers here. So I have put my other layers down of the encaustic medium. And I'm just going to explain right now what I'm going to do because this is going to require two hands. So sitting here and holding my camera while trying to press into hot wax is probably not a smart idea. So I have the layers of wax and they're still a little bit warm. They're okay to touch. But the next thing that I'm going to do is use that encaustic medium again. And I'm going to put down another layer going this way. And then I am going to immediately put my photograph on top and press into the warm wax. That takes a little bit because we want to make sure to press into all areas, otherwise it can curl up a little bit. This particular photograph is one that I took, did a little bit of editing on to get a little bit of the distressed look. I printed it on a Japanese rice paper and then used this tool, a little distressing tool, just to distress the edges just a little bit. I'm going for a really time-worn look with this one. So I'll go ahead and I will apply that layer of encaustic medium. Bring it over here and quickly just push this down into the wax. And I'll show you the result after that. This is the piece after I have adhered the paper. You notice that the paper is now in there. It is pretty much embedded down into that wax. I've not placed anything on top, any wax or anything like that. I did use the heat gun and I'll show you just a little bit to heat the layers underneath a little bit more so that I can continue to press the photo down, the paper down anywhere where it started to bubble or peel up or anything like that. 
Just keeping this moving because I don't want to overheat it. That will liquefy the wax underneath. And I definitely don't want that right now. So just heating it up a little bit and pressing in. Just like that. And I'm only using one hand here, so again, this is a little bit trickier. When I do a professional tutorial video, then I will show you a little bit better how this works. And again, real life, we have uh, my dog who came in. Say hi, Bo. My daughter over there somewhere, she was peeking in. There she is. <laughs> so real life studio does not exist outside of the household. It exists within it, within life. So I am pretty happy right now how this is um, pressed in. I'm not feeling any bubbles. It doesn't feel like it's wrinkling up anywhere. I do notice that I had a little bit more of distressing down here and I kind of want to match it up here just a little bit. I want just a little bit more of the distressed edges. So what I'm going to do is take one of my scraping tools, probably the smaller one here, and just work to kind of scrape away some of these edges, just a little bit more. up some of the paper and some of the wax. That's kind of what I want. And a little bit more chunkiness up there. If you look, I don't know, it's hard to see, but I'm just kind of pulling away the paper just a little bit there. Just a little bit more distressing to balance it out just a little bit more. I am going to go ahead now and add another layer of the encaustic medium over the top of this and that'll give me a little bit more play if I can still scratch away some it'll take away some of the wax I can take away a little bit more of the paper but what it's going to do is provide a protective covering for this right now in case I do want to start adding any more color or wax or any other details on top of it so I'm just coming back over to my encaustic medium and the board is still a little bit warm and that's what I want because that's going to help the wax just a little bit more Looks like I will need to melt some more encaustic medium too. And I'm just trying not to overlap it too much. I'm not being too specific right now, but I don't want to overlap the lines that I'm making because it'll create little ridges where I have overlapped them. Okay, and you will notice we're starting to get a little bit of that fascinating cloudy effect there from the wax. Love that. Every time you put down a wax layer, you do have to fuse. This time with the fusing, I'm going to use the iron that's over here. And again, just showing all my messy studio area back over here. But again, this requires just a little bit more um, focus and concentration. And if I had, uh, <laughs> If I had three or four hands right now, I would show you that. But basically, I'm just going to be taking it and dragging it across the top, using a paper towel to wipe off the bottom of the iron so that it doesn't pour, put more wax the next time I go over it. And I'll make a few passes and then um, show you what happened from there. So I recruited an extra pair of hands. Yay, my hands are free now, um, thanks to my daughter who's doing this. So I just want to show Hello. you, I've put down two layers already of the encaustic medium and I'm going to put down one more and then continue to fuse with that iron and I just wanted to show you if the lighting is okay I wanted to show you a little bit what the iron can do um, when you're using it for a fusing or artistic tool and you'll notice with each layer that I put down if the lighting if you can see it we do get a little bit more of the cloudy going on in there Sometimes that's desirable, sometimes it is not. Thank you, dear. Okay, so reaching around, I have my iron again. Okay, so there's what it looks like before. 
I'm going to do one pass down here at the bottom. And I always move in the direction of the photo. So for example, this, well, I'll explain that later. This is getting too good here. Tilt it up just a little bit more, my love. Nope. Up like this. Now tilt it down so you can see. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. I like to move horizontally on this. And you'll notice when I'm doing that, I'm taking away a little bit of the cloudy. And each time I am wiping off the bottom of my iron, I don't want any wax pooling down there at the bottom. I'm going to make a pass over this way. And I'm just kind of playing around with the passes of the iron because each time I do, it moves the wax in a little bit of a different direction and creates a little bit of a different feeling to the painting itself. So for example, right now I have it and you want to zoom in just a little bit and move it over there? There you go. Yeah. Okay, no, you don't have to zoom in like that. You can just... <laughs> I love yeah. this! Video <laughs> editing! Yay! Okay, you can see down here just a little bit that I have the cloudiness kind of around the edges and it's a little bit more clear up here. I can always use some of my scraping tools if I wanted to clear up some of the um, photo in the middle, um, but I can also continue to use this iron to move the wax on top around, and it just creates a different effect every single time that I do that. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Um, creates a different effect and that's part of the creative nature of this encaustic photography is deciding how I want this to look in the final piece. So what I'll do is probably keep playing around a little bit more with the iron. It's a little bit too cloudy down there for me, um, but play around a little bit more and then since I lost my extra pair of hands I will come back and show you what I'm going to do for the coloring. Uh, there is the piece. It is embedded in the wax, the encaustic medium, and it's ready for a little bit more um, aging. So what I have right now is um, a pigment stick, one of the oil paint pigment sticks from RNF. Uh, these are fantastic with encaustic. I've put a little bit on my glove and what I'm go basically going to be doing, I uh, lose focus there. I'm going to focus on the piece instead of the video. So let's see if I can, it does not want to focus. There we go. Basically, I am just taking this, getting a little bit on fingers, and then just rubbing it into the wax. You will start to notice that as I do this, it will start to pick up some of the texture that's coming through, anything that was left over. Come on. Someday I'll get a real camera. <laughs> Um, that was left over from the wax, so you can see that little ridge there. And that's part of the beauty of this color. It's not just like adding one layer of a paint color and it just kind of remains flat. Right here, I'm picking up a lot of the translucency, I'm getting some opaque places, and I'm really just starting to play with the texture along with the color. So I'm going to continue to go around right now, and I need my other hand to hold my piece. I'll come back and I will show you when I'm done when I have all of that color on there. Here's the piece right now after just one layer of that oil pigment stick. And I purposefully brought in a lot more color than I thought that I would want. And with this oil stick, I'm going to see if I can do this again with one hand. Um, basically, you just add and subtract, add and subtract. So I'm pulling back just a little bit now. I'm going to wipe off a little bit of this color. Difficult to do with one hand, and I keep saying that. <laughs> I'm also watching my art piece right now through my camera lens, through my phone camera lens. So it's a new way of doing art. I love it. Okay. You'll notice too that I do have, I printed this particular photo a little bit smaller than the board itself, and that's to give the, um, to give the piece these edges here. Oh, it does not like to focus. It, uh, to give the piece these edges right here. I could have pulled it all the way to the side, but I actually like when you have some of the distressed edges right here. Really, as I mentioned before, going for like more the time-worn look with this particular piece, which is why I'm leaving some of those um, 
visible. I could take some colored wax if I wanted to. I've got multiple colors right now actually going on, on the griddle over there. Um, and add it to the sides to really create more of an opaque look over on the sides, which would cover up everything. But I'm purposefully keeping this translucent with the oil stick over here, just so I can add a little bit of color, but keep those edges, that kind of you know worn look to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. It's going to require two hands, two hands. So I will do this and then I will show the finished piece when I'm done. So here is the final piece. And it obviously looks a little bit different now that I have come upstairs and gotten out of the studio light. Um, you can see where I finished up some of that color down there, and I've not yet finished the edges. I will do something uh, with the border edge down there. But um, I will admit, because it's just part of the process, that I did get distracted on the last layer. I had uh, put down some of that oil color that you saw. And then I decided to do a final protective layer of the encaustic medium, brushing that over again, and fused it with the iron, which I don't usually do and probably should not have done, because it actually started creating um, a little bit more, um, it melted it down and brought in some of those dark colors. It when the oil and the wax, the oil color that I was using, and the wax had melted together. Um, with the iron, it kind of started dragging it across the piece. So there were many different ways I could have fixed that, you know, just I could have just scraped off that particular layer and kind of started over. But instead, I just kind of went with it a little bit. Um, so you'll notice this isn't exactly what I was describing that I wanted in the beginning. You can't see those edges as much of the paper anymore because it got a little bit darker than I was expecting. But that's part of the fun of the creative process is you can decide to start over and try and create what you wanted originally, or you can just run with what was or what is. Whatever. <laughs> and that's what I decided to do this time, is just run with it. I'm not unhappy with the final piece. I'm actually very happy with it, otherwise I would have, you know, started over. But this is kind of a lesson in just going with the flow. So here's the piece, and I will try and put a, possibly a final photo of it on there. Um, but if you are in the Bloomington area, I would love for you to come see the final finished piece hanging in gather. The show opens on Friday, June 2nd. I will be there for the grand opening. And then you can stop by and see the new store on the square all throughout the month of June, or head over now and see the fantastic things that she has to offer. Absolutely gorgeous store over there now. So there's your encaustic. I'll show just a little bit more of the texture. Difficult to see. Oh, there you go. A little bit better with the lighting translucency, texture, color, time-worn, all the things that I love in the creative products. So enjoy. Hopefully it was a little bit helpful.